Creating egg white foams, aeration and baked goods using eggs to create foams. Welcome to this training module designed to educate baking industry professionals on how to successfully create egg white foams. It is highly recommended that prior to viewing this module, you obtain background information from the module entitled, Adding Volume to Baked Goods. I would like to start by introducing you to the egg white, one part of the whole egg. The yolk, also commonly called the yellow, is the other part. This graphic illustrates the components of a whole egg showing the egg white and the egg yolk. This table illustrates the composition of whole eggs, whites, and yolks on a solids basis. On a solids basis, egg white is almost all protein and practically the sole source of these proteins are conalbumin, globulins, ovalbumin, and ovomucin. It is these proteins that enable egg whites to be whipped into a foam that is six to eight times greater in volume than unwhipped liquid egg white. No other natural food ingredient can create as large of a food foam as egg white. This illustration is what it looks like when proteins align around air bubbles. Dried egg whites need to be blended with a carbohydrate such as sugar to increase solubility before hydration. To best understand how all egg products can entrap air, it is important to understand their protein composition. See, the viscosity of all egg products is ideal for incorporation of air cells during whipping or beating. As whipping or beating progresses, air bubbles decrease in size and increase in number, all the time surrounded by egg proteins. Egg whites are superior foaming agents because egg whites have low air to liquid interfacial tension. Thus, when beaten or whipped, the proteins in the egg white become denatured or simply they unfold. This exposes two oppositely charged ends of the protein molecule, the hydrophobic or water hating end and the hydrophilic or water loving ends. The proteins align themselves between the air and the water forming bubbles with their hydrophilic chains pointing into the water phase and their hydrophobic chains pointing into the air phase. During baking, these proteins bond with each other forming a delicate yet reinforced network that strengthens the baked goods and enables them to maintain their volume. But the protein in whites do all of this much better than the proteins in whole egg or yolk alone. This table is comprised of all the proteins that are exclusive to the egg white. Yes, it is the unique proteins found in the egg whites that make them foaming powerhouses. Ovalbumin, which is about 54% of the white's protein content, coagulate when heated, forming a solid framework around entrapped air that enables the wall structure to resist collapse. Ovalbumin is responsible for initial foaming when egg whites are whipped. Ovomucin, on the other hand, is responsible for holding on to the air bubbles during heating and has elastic qualities that allow the protein to stretch as the air bubbles enlarge. The division of labor is not absolute. Some ovalbumin probably helps with the initial foaming and the other proteins eventually coagulate in the oven. But these proteins are specialists to a large extent and without them, the egg white foams would not be the powerhouses that they are. A number of variables can impact the stability of egg white foams. Here we have three angel food cake preparations. One made correctly. This one actually measures nine and a half centimeters in height. Here we have another angel food cake made, but with over beaten egg whites, and it only measures eight centimeters. The third angel food cake preparation contained fat, and you can see the dramatic decrease in height with it only measuring seven and a half centimeters. Now these 
angel food cake preparations and the one that's made ideally to give you the height and volume that you need would generally be made with these products. This is liquid egg white, which is usually high whip for an angel food application, or spray dried egg whites, which are also high whip and are ideal for these types of formulations. For starters, it is possible to overbeat egg white foams. When this happens, the proteins denature and prevent them from entrapping air. For example, when properly beaten egg white is used in a souffle, the baking process slowly expands the air bubbles, which are surrounded by the egg white proteins, giving the souffle its signature puff. Extreme overbeating breaks the set protein bonds, the air escapes, and then the foam loses volume. These are great examples of egg whites in foam applications. As you can see, when the angel food cake is prepared correctly, we get a very nice fluffy texture with even air distribution in the product. However, when egg whites are overbeaten, the proteins don't hold on to air as well, and we get ununiform big holes or big air pockets in the product. And when fat contamination happens, we get a much more dense structure to the cake, which is something similar to a sponge cake. If egg white foam stands for more than five minutes, air starts to escape and it quickly returns to its liquid state. A little bit of sugar content can be added during the foam preparation to prevent air from escaping. If added properly, the result is a smooth, stable foam that does not collapse or drain as quickly as a foam without added sugar. However, sugar can also retard foaming if too much is added or if it's added too fast. Historically, bakers and chefs use copper bowls to stabilize egg white foams. The copper in the bowl combines with conalbumin, an egg white protein, and helps to stabilize the protein during heating. Today, a more common approach is stabilizing the egg white protein by adding cream of tartar known chemically as potassium bitartarate. This acidic salt lowers the pH of the egg white, which shortens the time necessary to form a foam. Temperature also impacts the volume of the egg white foams. Egg whites reach their greatest volume if beaten closer to room temperature than refrigerated temperature. This reduces the surface tension so the whites can foam more easily. It is helpful to remember that beating time is directly related to temperature and the colder the whites, the longer the beating time and this could lead to over beating. Here are two examples of whipped egg whites, one that was whipped at room temperature and another that was whipped while being chilled. Elevation of temperature reduces surface tension and makes foaming occur easier. There are a number of other variables that affect egg white foam stability. Salt can decrease the foam stability by weakening the matrix of the protein bonds. It is best to add salt to a recipe along with other dry ingredients. Water can increase the volume and lightness of a foam, though there is a greater likelihood that some liquid will drain off due to the dilution of proteins. Further, egg white diluted by 40% or more of its volume in water cannot produce a stable foam. But there's no ingredient as detrimental to an egg white foam as fat, even a trace amount. And this is because fat molecules have hydrophobic and hydrophilic ends just like protein. Fat competes with the protein for special alignment with the gas bubbles. Here's where the problem occurs. Unlike proteins, fat don't create a stable structure. They won't create any cross-linked bonds to reinforce the network of gas bubbles. Instead, fat molecules continue to compete with the protein molecules in forming bonds. When even the slightest amount of fat, any type of fat, buttercream, cream, residual cooking oil on the mixing bowl, or beater, or even a drop of egg yolk comes in contact with the egg white, the foam will never achieve its full potential. In conclusion, varying levels of fat and the degree of beating can have a huge impact on foam volume. Thank you for viewing this training module on how to successfully create an egg white foam.